Now most days I report on what happens to other people. Today I'm sharing something about myself. It's in hopes of helping people born with a fairly common heart condition that causes something called supraventricular tachycardia, SVT for short. While the condition is common, it doesn't get much attention. So patients with it are often undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Or their doctors may simply be unaware of a simple outpatient procedure that can cure it. SVT is a condition suffered by people like me born with extra electrical circuits in our hearts. Dr. David Sandler of the Oklahoma Heart Institute specializes in treating patients with SVT. Think of him as an electrician for hearts. He says three types of extra electrical circuits cause SVT. The most common ones are extra pathways within the normal circuitry. The second is an extra pathway completely separate from the normal circuitry. The third kind is really called atrial tachycardia, which is a little area that's firing on its own. Those extra circuits sometimes make our hearts beat way too fast. When it happens, the heart can't effectively pump blood throughout our bodies, so we suffer symptoms ranging from a fluttery sensation to a floppy or hard pounding feeling, like your heart's about to fly out of your chest. And occasionally, we get dizzy or faint. When I was younger, doctors dismissed my symptoms, saying my heart raced or I fainted because I was skinny and didn't eat right or that I must be a little high strung, or drank too much coffee. Uh, there's been a study shown that 50% of primary care physicians will initially diagnose usually a woman with an anxiety disorder or panic attacks rather than what they really have, which is an arrhythmia causing their symptoms. I wasn't diagnosed with SVT until after more than 20 years of trips to the emergency room with my heart racing out of control. And I'm not the only one who has ended up there. Supraventricular tachycardia has been estimated to occur approximately in 2 million people per year in the United States. Many with the condition simply use maneuvers like bearing down or medication to get their heart rate back below 100 beats per minute and keep it there. When those treatments don't do the job, there is another option. It's a quick, simple outpatient procedure called a catheter ablation. In 99% of all cases, it completely cures the problem by getting rid of the extra electrical pathways in the heart. You're about to see Dr. Sandler get rid of mine. What I'm doing now is I'm going to be putting three catheters into the vein in her leg. And you'll see how easily they go to straight to the heart and how easily uh, we can manipulate our catheters from down here and move to any area of the heart that we might need to. This one here is just going to measure the electrical uh, circuits. This one here has a tip that can not just measure but can also burn. So it's going to be using radio frequency energy to burn, cauterize, sear, uh, the important area that we're going to go after. During an ablation, the doctor uses radio waves to burn away the tiny spots in the heart where the extra electrical circuits are located. But before he can zap the spots, he has to determine which kind of SVT I have by stimulating my heart. Measuring things within the heart so far has shown us that she seems to have normal conduction when she's not having her arrhythmia. But now here comes the fun part. Dr. Sandler is deliberately trying to trigger an episode of SVT. Okay, so now we are pacing her heart at 100 beats a minute. Faster, faster, faster. Let's see if we can get her to go into her arrhythmia. Now we're going to do some more stimulation. Lying flat, completely sedated, this is not a normal heartbeat. And she's going 174 beats a minute. By looking at the monitor, I know what type of rhythm she has and what I need to do. So she has the extra pathway near the normal circuitry of her own heart. This is by far the most common one, making up about 70% of supraventricular tachycardias. Making up about 70% of supraventricular tachycardias. To get rid of the extra pathways, Dr. Sandler uses short blasts of radio waves. And we will apply as little energy and as few applications as needed uh, to make it so that we can't get her to go into the arrhythmia. We've been on for 104 seconds. We're going to go for 120 seconds total. So after just that short application of radio frequency energy, I now cannot get her to go into that arrhythmia. In just two minutes flat, I'm cured. No more racing heart, no more fainting, and best of all, no more trips to the ER. Unless at some time in the future, that little circuit in my heart decides to regrow. It is possible to come back. There's two ways that people can have this recur, in my opinion. Uh, the first is they never get any better. And if they never got any better, that probably means I didn't wait long enough, or I misdiagnosed, or I burned the wrong thing. That's rare. 
the most common way this comes back is they do fine for two or three or four years, much better than they were, and then, lo and behold, they have the same arrhythmia that they had. What can happen is the heart can actually regenerate some of these extra pathways. So I, I don't claim those failures because if they got better, that means we got the right thing. And again, we want to be as safe as possible. Uh, that's the most important thing. The majority of people that we're doing these procedures on are otherwise healthy young people and to end up you know, causing them to need a pacemaker would be awful. So if they come back in a few years, I can live with that.